One of the, the, the dangers of going down this cooperative side is that not every park has that same uh, wealth uh, to, to draw from. And so it's going to lead to unevenness, is what a lot of things say as well. Uh, a controversy uh, concerning the deer issue, uh, the casino issue at the battlefield, and I'm wondering if those sorts of issues and controversies crop up at the Eisenhower homestead, for example. Well, the um, Eisenhower home is, uh, is a unit of the National Park System. It's governed by the same superintendent that Ron Gettysburg, our superintendent, the superintendent of those sites. Um, the, as you can probably imagine, there, there's not as much visitation at the Eisenhower site, and that there is not as much controversy surrounding events at the Eisenhower home because it does not necessarily engender the same passions that the Civil War does. Um, that is by no means to negate its historical importance. It's one of our gems in the park system. It's got a very, very rich collection of museum artifacts, and it's um, it's really a snapshot in time. But no, these, some of these issues, even though we are co co managed, don't necessarily don't necessarily spill over into the Eisenhower the Eisenhower um, plane of operations. I like you to run it up that way because, again, especially with the deer, of course, the natural uh, elements don't know borders and, and would, of course, uh, have had an impact. Um, it took me a while. That's when I was living there, when the deer harvest was going on. And it took me a while to kind of wrap my head around it. I think that's why I had to launch into a whole project to figure it out. Um, but it, it, is, it is fascinating that um, the, the, the deer could be seen as a disruptor of the restoration effort that, that was underway and was planned. And so in that way, you know, the Eisenhower farm rest would not be restored uh, in the same way. So I'm sure it wouldn't have mattered quite as much, except that they could have just made a, a, a deer preserve uh, maybe, uh, and, and kept them around. <laughs> As long as we're speaking about deer, I, I would uh, add that the situation with deer and trying to, to control the deer population is not unique to Gettysburg. Right now, uh, the same sort of thing is going on at Bailey Forge National Historical Park down in southeastern Pennsylvania, one of the most, the most populated part of our state. And Valley Forge National Parks, with its several thousand of preserved acres, is one of the largest green areas in all of southeastern Pennsylvania, which makes it very popular as a recreational area for, for all those thousands of people that live down in suburban Philadelphia. Um, I think a lot of these people don't necessarily go out there and try to learn something about the winter encampment at Bailey Forge. They go out there to, to walk their dogs and to fly kites and to jog and to do recreational things. But because it's a preserved big piece of land, it has become a refuge for the deer population. And it is a serious issue out there, not just in terms of deer, you know, destroying understory and you know, making any attempt to, to keep vegetation in control. They're destroying the vegetation. And another important factor is that with in a highly populated area like this, uh, safety is a real issue. A, a small portion of the Pennsylvania Turnpike goes through Valley Forge National Park. And this one to two mile stretch of Turnpike has had more deer car collisions resulting in injuries and even death of human beings than any other comparable one to two mile stretch on the entire Pennsylvania Turnpike. So that is a big issue down there at Valley Forge. Um, a proposal was developed much at Gettysburg to try to control the deer population through direct production by, by marksmen. Um, obviously, Friends of Animals groups sued the National Park Service over this, but my understanding is that the most recently the judge um, has, has found in favor of the Park Service and has found that 
uh, they are correct in uh, taking the steps they're taking to control the deer population there. If I could just jump back to... Um, it's, it's interesting to note how, how much the deer gets everybody, gets everybody worked out. <laughs> uh, just to go back to uh, the issue of Eisenhower again, part of the reason some of these issues don't necessarily translate to the Eisenhower site is another thing that Brian mentioned in the context of his talk, the general management plan. The Eisenhower National Historic Site general management plan is, um, is, a, is one that has to be, has not been, uh, Newman has not been written in quite some time. Um, therefore, since it is an independent site, it must have its own general management plan. So I'm sure some of these issues that you mentioned um, and, and their impacts on the Eisenhower site will be taken care of and addressed in a comprehensive rewriting of the general management plan. Those documents or the general management plans are always fascinating because the first step is to identify what your goal is, uh, what the goal of the site is, what is being preserved, because I think the question was on my first slide. Um, and, and as we saw in, in, in my experience, and that is a, a changing uh, a dynamic. Uh, it is something uh, we, we might know, think we know what it's about, why the place is preserved, but it doesn't remain static. And so that becomes kind of funky to watch play out in the public. Uh, 